Eastern Time on Space Shuttle Mission STS-88. The primary objective of this flight is to deliver into low Earth orbit the Unity Connecting Module and to mate it with the previously launched Zarya Control Module. Zarya is the Russian-built component that was launched last month from Kazakhstan in Russia. This mission will mark the beginning of a five-year orbital assembly of the space station and kick off a new era of international space exploration. And we do have live TV from the suit-up room. Our mission commander, Bob Cabana, is making his fourth trip into space. Piloting the vehicle this, uh, this mission is first-time flyer, uh, Rick Sturko, Jim Newman. Uh, this is his third flight. Uh, Jerry Ross here is uh, preparing for his uh, sixth mission. Nancy Curry preparing for her third flight. And our final crew member is Sergei Krikalev. He's our cosmonaut on this uh, mission, making his second trip into space aboard the space shuttle. With Cabana now on the flight deck, uh, mission specialist number three, Jim Newman, will be the next to enter the vehicle, and he will be seated on the mid-deck and be assisted into his seat by one of the closeout crew members. And Sergei Krikalov is now entering the vehicle. Uh, he'll be making his way to his seat on the mid-deck. Hey, Bob, the launch team is all go. Uh, we're ready today, and we're proud to be a part of building the International Space Station. And we're ready to uh, start on a new era in international cooperation in space and get this space station built. Thanks for everything. The gaseous oxygen vent hood will slowly be retracted away from the top of the external tank. Never close and lock your visors. 5802 slow. You have a very tight mission ahead of you. And never run your tank T minus 15 seconds. 12, 11, 10, 9. We have main engine start. 4, 3, 2, 1. Boost your mission and lift off of the Space Shuttle Endeavour. Unity, the first uh, U.S. built uh, component of the International Space Station, is uh, 18 feet long, 15 feet in diameter, weighs 25,600 pounds, and will serve uh, not only as a passageway uh, for the astronauts from module to module, much as the connecting node on the Mir space station does, but also uh, is equipped uh, with six docking ports uh, for uh, a variety of different uh, components uh, that will be sent uh, to the International Space Station component by component as the space station begins to spread its wings and expand in size over the next uh, several years. And every Houston, we are looking at some beautiful video for your centerline camera, and you are go for the approach. Endeavour closing in at less than a quarter of a foot per second. Endeavour Houston, you have a go for grapple. One and a half. Order, One foot to pin overlap. Six inches. Keep it coming. A little more. A little more. Over there. A little mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. Grapple. Houston Endeavor, we're going to fly it all the way down to uh, install position. We're not going to stop uh, part way. We copy, Bob. Thank you. Yes, he happen. could. You've got it. Power off. All 18 lights are out. Son of a gun. <laughs> yeah. Houston Step Endeavor, <laughs> we show ourselves complete with the uh, manual docking sequence, and we're off the card at step 25. They sure didn't want this thing coming open. Kind of like work. Gas pressure, 15-1, water 
and uh, Jim Newman will be doing a spacewalk later today, starting off by installing two box-like antennas on the outside of the Unity module. These antennas are part of the S-band early communications system that will allow U.S. flight controllers to monitor Unity's systems. How much further is it up there, Jerry? This the uh, docking uh, system hatch uh, from Endeavour, the first of uh, six hatches the crew will open today as they uh, enter all the way into uh, the International Space Station's Unity and Zarya modules. They're now uh, opening the docking uh, mechanism hatch, entering into uh, the mating adapter to Unity. The, the hatch now coming open uh, to Unity. Cabana and uh, Sergei Krikalev enter the module. The first astronauts uh, aboard uh, the International Space Station in orbit. It's uh, unbelievable uh, to be part of such a great program, bringing all these countries together, working together in space for everybody's betterment. Now the hatch uh, 
opening to the main compartment for Zarya. Houston Endeavor, uh, just since this is the only camera I got, I want to get a quick picture of Sergey in his future home. He's anxiously awaiting uh, Shep and uh, Yuri to come join him. Mission Specialist Jerry Ross uh, begins a setup of early communication system equipment uh, in the module. This is Mission Control Chloe off. You're looking uh, at uh, Mission Specialist Nancy Curry and Sergey Krikalov as they work through a, a in-flight maintenance procedure. The first astronauts uh, aboard the International Space Station spent a total of 28 hours and 32 minutes aboard the station modules. And uh, the crew uh, closing the first uh, hatch in Zarya. This is an internal hatch to Zarya between the pressurized adapter and Zarya's main compartment or uh, instrument module. Houston Endeavor, uh, FTBPA ICC hatch, uh, firmly seated, uh, This is a view of a camera located here at the Johnson Space Center. The speed at 12,300 miles per hour. Currently in a right bank. The wings angled 64 degrees to horizontal as it continues to descend into the atmosphere and slow down. We are just so happy to have gotten the International Space Station off to such a super start. We are going to build a space station. It is going to be the biggest, brightest new star on the horizon. Exploring in space is our destiny. Don't give up the dream. Keep exploring. And let's do this thing and get it done, because it's the right thing to do. Houston Endeavor, we'll stop. And we are now entering the final hours of the countdown for the launch of Space Shuttle Discovery on Mission STS-96. It will be the 14th flight of Discovery when it lifts off from Launch Pad 39B later this morning. And here we see in the suited room our commander, Kent Rominger, and our pilot, Rick Husband, and Julie Payette from the Canadian Space Agency, Mission Specialist Tammy Jernigan. Ellen Ochoa is Mission Specialist number two. Here is Dr. Dan Barry, and that's number three. And Valery Tokarev will be joining uh, Tammy Jernigan as the first crew members to enter the International Space Station on day five of the flight. T-minus 15 seconds. Sound suppression water system is now activating. T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And lift off on Space Shuttle Discovery.
Houston, Discovery and the station now at 290 feet. Discovery Houston, you are go for approach and dock. And Houston, we copy you. Go for approach and dock. Thank you. Three feet, three inch corridor. Okay, range ruler point one, TCS point one one. Two feet, 16 inch. One. Four, two inches. Okay, we have a capture mark. Okay, I've got it. Good job. Hey, Houston Discovery, we have captured. Awesome, you did an awesome job. It was so cool. Discovery Houston, you have a go for egress. Unbelievable. Mission Specialist Ella Nochoa inside the Shuttle Discovery now uh, moving the two astronauts using the 50-foot long robot arm as they move uh, to the rear of the payload bay. Crews back down on payload bay now and you can see Tammy again working off the end of the arm preparing to uh, remove some bolts that hold the uh, Russian boom in place for launch. The Tammy Jernigan now uh, opening the hatch into Unity. In the last time that uh, a crew was aboard Unity, the STS-88 crew on December 10th, 1998, cosmonaut Valerie Tokarev and Canadian astronaut Julie Payette as they uh, begin work uh, to replace the first three of 18 uh, small battery charge discharge uh, devices that they'll replace uh, throughout the mission. The crew's already transferred about 2,500 pounds of gear uh, in the past uh, two days that they've had access into the station. Uh, they'll transfer about 1,000 more pounds before they depart. There it is. Component filter. We're ready. And Discovery Houston for uh, station. The harmful component filter has been changed. Space Station receiving word that there is a go for the crew to leave the Zarya module. Discovery Houston, we have pulled the rooms on both sides of the ocean, and you are go for undocking from the International Space Station. Today, NASA will embark on the 95th Space Shuttle flight in the 18-year history of the shuttle program. Eileen Collins making history as the first female commander aboard the Space Shuttle. So Shuttle Launch Control, we do have the flight crew in the suit-up room at the Operations and Checkout Building, Commander Eileen Collins. This will be her third flight. She's had been an astronaut for eight years. Her first flight as commander. Pilot Jeff Ashby making his first flight aboard the space shuttle today. And we have French Space Agency astronaut Michelle Tonini. Mission Specialist Katie Coleman across the room. She is Mission Specialist 1 making her second flight today. She, of course, has the primary responsibility for deploying the Chandra X-ray telescope. And Mission Specialist Steve Hawley, the flight engineer for STS-93. <laughs> Flight crew now at the 195 foot level out at launch pad 39B. Members of the closeout crew assisting the astronauts. Eileen, the weather is cooperating tonight. The launch team is ready to go. EOS auto sequence has been initiated. Flight crew, close and lock your visors. Initiate O2 flow. 
A few days delayed, but same enthusiastic launch team wishing Columbia's crew success on your mission. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. We have a goal for engine start. Zero. Lift off of Columbia. And this view uh, looking from inside Columbia's payload bay, the Chandra X-ray Observatory, the 45.3 foot long Chandra, stretching uh, almost the entire length of Columbia's payload bay. Southwest Ultraviolet Imaging System of the Moon as uh, astronaut Steve Hawley continues uh, to collect ultraviolet data from that telescopic instrument which is mounted in the side hatch window of Columbia's mid-deck.
Rocket engine, 103, 103, I don't like control. See me close. That's it, start. Good. It's looking good. This is shuttle launch control following a 24-hour scrub turnaround. The shuttle vehicle, the seven-member flight crew, and the KSC launch team are ready to support the 100th flight in shuttle history, and most importantly, resuming International Space Station construction. And here we have Commander Brian Duffy. This will be Duffy's second flight as a commander. Here we have pilot Pam Melroy. She will assist Duffy at the flight controls for launch, for rendezvous. Here we have Michael Lopez Alegria, mission specialist number four. Here is Jeff Wiseoff, mission specialist three, making his fourth shuttle flight on STS-92. And here we have Japanese astronaut Koichi Wakata, mission specialist number five. Mission specialist number two, Bill MacArthur, already has his helmet donned. And there is his spacewalk partner, Leroy Chow. Mission specialist number one. This is his third mission. And the crew members have now disembarked the Astro van and will make their way to the elevators on the fixed service structure. And we see Commander Duffy leading the way, now on the 195 foot level of the fixed service structure. Here we see astronaut support personnel, Rick Linehan on the right side, helping Commander Duffy into his seat. Pilot Melroy now being positioned in her seat on the flight deck. Richie Wakata now in the white room. He will be seated in seat number three. RSRT, OTC. TLT, this NPD, I have you loud and clear, and good afternoon, Pam. OTC, TLT, touch warning memory clear is complete, no unexpected messages. Copy that. Flight crew, OTC, close and lock your visors and initiate O2 flow. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. We have a go for minute to start. 4, 3, 2, 1. 100. International Space Station through the centerline camera and the orbiter docking system. From top to bottom, the Unity connecting node, the Zarya control module, the Zvezda service module, the first living quarters for residents aboard the station, and the Progress resupply vessel, uh, which carries uh, life support systems and other gear for that first expedition crew. The station 143 feet in length, 67 tons of hardware in orbit, at an altitude of 230 statute miles. Discovery, we have 
one uh, into the pre-install position. And Houston, uh, how do you like that PSEC value? We are comfortable with that PSEC value and we are ready to press on in. And so with that call uh, from Ellen Ochoa to the crew on board to discover they've been given a go for the uh, installation of the Z-1 truss to the International Space Station, adding another 19,000 pounds of critical hardware to the growing uh, size of the International Space Station. Tomorrow, uh, Leroy and I are going to uh, head out and we're going to climb that mountain. Uh, we thought Z-1 was pretty big in the pool, but when we saw it out of the uh, uh, aft uh, window today uh, in the uh, high hover position, it was huge! Pressurized mating adapter number three in the cargo bay will be uh, added to the opposite port on the Unity module.
pretty cool. We just uh, flew by the Outer Banks of North Carolina, and of course, uh, 97 years ago, uh, that's where the Wright brothers first started all this stuff. It's kind of cool. It's almost the uh, 100th anniversary of the Wright brothers' flight. This is the 100th shuttle flight. beginning of the free flight portion. It's uh, pretty easy to do the rotations uh, and the translations are easy as well. The problem is that uh, it's almost impossible to get completely stopped, that is to hover completely because uh, the pulse size, you can't get it small enough to just deaden your race. My target was to get my helmet to come straight into the uh, camera. So the height looks good right now, but I, you see I have a little bit of a uh, lateral offset. doing a great job of uh, tending my tether to keep it slack so that it wasn't uh, making inputs uh, and all the inputs would be those of the safer unit itself. The unique view of the flight control surface checkout uh, from cameras uh, in the cargo bay. Camera in the payload bay showing the uh, southern lights, the Aurora Australis as uh, the International Space Station passed well to the south of Australia, looking toward Antarctic. Okay. Clear. Sam was at the controls. We come out of the undocking, and here we go. And you'll see as soon as the pedal's clear, we'll do a couple pulses to get away. Although it looks like night, you can see the sun coming in from the uh, upper left-hand part of the screen. So it's nice as we pulled away to see that uh, the station had gained a third dimension. comes up, I'll uh, address it to Commander Brian Duffy, is what is the main point of having an International Space Station? Well, the International Space Station will be the place where we can begin to, um, to learn more about living in space. It will also be an, an outpost for us, uh, should we decide in the future, to be able to continue uh, further exploration, uh, maybe perhaps going to the moon or up to Mars even. So we're looking forward in the future using the space station uh, to take advantage of all the things that zero gravity can do for us. Discovery home after completing one of the most complex missions to date and setting the stage for the first permanent occupation of the International Space Station beginning next week. for launch of Space Shuttle Endeavour on mission SCS-97 is continuing this afternoon. The five-member crew of Endeavour will spend about seven days docked with the International Space Station. And we do have live TV now of our astronauts, beginning with Commander Brent Judd, who is preparing for his third mission today. Pilot Mike Bloomfield preparing for his second 
trip into space. Uh, mission specialist Joe Tanner, uh, who is preparing for his third flight into space. Mark Gurno, our representative from the Canadian Space Agency. He will use the Canadian-built robot arm to install the large U.S. solar arrays on the station. And he will serve as onboard choreographer during the spacewalks planned for this flight. And rounding out the crew is mission specialist Carlos Noriega, preparing for his second flight into space on board the space shuttle. see Mark Gano uh, making final handshakes as he uh, kneel down to crawl into the Number orbital endeavor. The and he'll be seated behind our commander Brent Jett and pilot Mike Bloomfield. Okay, Brent, it's a beautiful night to fly, so we wish you luck, uh, have fun, and give our best to Shep, Sergey, and Yuri. 15. T minus 15 seconds. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. We have a go for the engine to start. day for the docking of Endeavour to the International Space Station. Just a uh, camera in the payload bay is Canadian astronaut Mark Gonneau maneuvers in to latch on to the P-6 truss structure. This is Mission Control Houston as the uh, shuttle and station travel at a speed of five miles per second. The uh, solar ray truss structure is in the process of being uh, precisely uh, aligned uh, to an overnight thermal conditioning position called an overnight park position. This uh, view uh, showing uh, Carlos as he works at the connections between the newly attached 50-foot, uh, 35,000-pound uh, truss and uh, the International Space Station. Tanner uh, working near the top of the uh, P-6 truss. Okay, all the cables are uh, made. It. Yeah, we see it coming out. than the rest of them in the image. Endeavour Houston with the plan. We'd like you to retract such uh, far enough such that the tension bar is uh, touching the sill and then do a quick uh, motion outward so the cycle between start and stop is as quick as you could probably uh, make it with your hand motion. Yes, we agree. Those uh, stuck solar panels on each of the two blankets on this port wing now uh, fully unstuck and uh, a resumption of the uh, deployment procedure can uh, begin. Houston Endeavour, they're going to let me make this final call. We have two tension blankets. Copy that. Great work, gentlemen. You've got a lot of happy folks down here. Yes, Shannon, here's uh, the tools we typically go out with. If anybody uh, wanted to see what it looked like when it's not on our suit, doesn't weigh much here. Lots of fun in the water, though. This uh, view is uh, Joe Tanner scales the International Space Station up to the point to where the robotic arm awaits. 
halfway up uh, the 90 foot tall tower above Endeavour's Pilot Bay. Houston Endeavour, can you confirm that we have a go for the Nader patch panel? Endeavour, Houston, you should see the radiator moving. It's moving. In keeping with long-standing tradition of iron workers around the world, no bad luck to fall on this building now. This gives us uh, a great idea of just how high up you guys are. This gives me a great idea of how high I am. Carlos Noriega's helmet camera providing a bird's eye view as he uh, pops open the hatch uh, to the airlock of Endeavour. A good view inside the uh, the airlock from Carlos's perspective. International Space Station crew members visible on the hatch. The crew requests permission to come aboard. Endeavour, permission granted. This uh, view is looking uh, down the length of the station now through uh, the cone-shaped adapter that attaches the Unity module to the station's Zarya module. Continuing uh, into the station, into the outermost compartment of the Zvezda Living Quarters module. This uh, view down uh, at the window in the uh, Zvezda Living Quarters module. Home for the three-member station crew. Uh, seen here, Flight Engineer Sergei Kukulev of the station crew and uh, uh, Pilot Yuri Gudzenko. Uh, who've been aboard the station for over a month. This uh, a view of a crew quarters compartment on board the station with the sleeping bag uh, used by the crew, a, a window for each crew member. On behalf of the crew on Alpha, I'd, I'd like to commend Endeavour and its crew for the, uh, the tremendous technical challenge and the, the great achievements uh, putting P6 together. We really appreciate it. Less than an hour to go before they'll close the hatches for a final time. Uh, astronaut Joe Tanner in the uh, background of this picture, um, just taking a hand uh, from uh, Mark Garneau of the ship's log of the station. That uh, book is kept on board the station and signed by all visiting crew members. And Captain Shepard, the SPS 97 crew, request permission to depart Alpha. Permission granted. Permission granted. Endeavor departing. Oh, <laughs> 
on the right. She's on the side, right, throttling. Coming up on the box, man. Okay, good. We're looking good. Come on, Challenger. Go and throttle up. Mark. 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 Houston, come check. Columbia, Houston, come check. But engine 103, 103, I don't like control. See me first. Press it, start. Good. It's looking good. of the Launch Control Center at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, where we have entered the last five hours of the countdown for the launch of Space Shuttle Atlantis on mission STS-98 with the U.S. Science Laboratory Destiny. This is the 23rd flight for Space Shuttle Atlantis and the 102nd mission of the Space Shuttle program since launches began in April of 1981. There's our commander, Ken Cockrell. Next to him is our pilot, Mark Polanski, and over now to our mission specialist, Tom Jones, one of our EBA crew members on this flight. We see mission specialist, Bob Kerbeam, also one of our EBA crew members, leading things off on the first spacewalk. Next to Bob is Marsha Ivans. She'll be attaching the U.S. Laboratory Destiny to the space station using that robotic arm. Sound suppression water system now activated. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, go from 8 inches to start. 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, and lift off. Commander Ken Cockrell and uh, Mission Specialist Tom Jones open the hatch. Marsh Ivan continues to move the uh, docking port now away from the Unity module up to its temporary uh, stowage location. view from Tom Jones's helmet outside the Destiny Laboratory preparing to uh, connect the uh, heater cable, this to provide uh, thermal cooling to the Destiny module. And now this unique view from the tip of the shuttle's robotic arm as Marsha Ivans uh, moves the arm into position, uh, just coming into view the docking port. Now, 
Iran, a mission where the 100 DGA took place. And we think in the years to come, in the very near future, we'll see not only the construction of the space station completed, but spacewalkers will take their place not only in low Earth orbit, but back on the moon and back on the asteroids and perhaps even to Mars. And we look forward to that day, and we're ready for that next century of DGA. Thanks. Thanks, guys. The hatch to the Destiny module open. This uh, module providing an additional 3,750 cubic feet of, uh, of space, workspace, living space. What uh, originally was a very clean module is now uh, beginning to look a little more active as uh, crew members uh, begin the process of uh, systematically activating a whole host of equipment in the system's racks. Atlantis departing. Good morning and thank you for joining us. We are in the suit up room here at Kennedy Space Center's operation and checkout building. We see Commander Weatherby. He is on his fifth shuttle mission. Rookie pilot, Jim Kelly. Mission specialist number one, Andy Thomas, spent 130 days aboard the Russian Mir space station in 1998. And mission specialist number five and Russian commander of the Expedition Two crew, Yuri Yusichov of the Russian Space Agency lived aboard Mir for six months in 94, and again in 1996. Mission specialist number four, Susan Helms, is a veteran of four previous shuttle flights. Here, mission specialist number three, Jim Voss, veteran of four space flights. Mission specialist, Paul Richards, making his first space flight. Commander Jim Weatherby now uh, rotating the handle that will open the hatch, enabling the crews to greet one another. Well, take a look at your new home. Oh, it is spick and span. Okay, let me do it right. Make us proud. I know you will. Go slowly. Time is not a factor. I do not care about time. Do everything right. <coughs>
an excellent view of the Italian Space Agency built Leonardo multi-purpose logistics module now out of the cargo bay, slowly being uh, maneuvered towards a position for installation on the Nader common berthing mechanism port of the Unity module. This first view inside Leonardo. These are the stowage bags uh, that are filled with uh, logistical items, hardware, spare parts, computers, office supplies, and personal effects for the Expedition 2 crew. Houston, the first Expedition crew is present and accounted for. Change of command is an ancient naval tradition. Space Station Alpha has been commissioned in orbit. All systems functional and ready to carry out operations. We are on a true spaceship now, making her way above any earthly boundary. May the goodwill, spirit, and sense of mission we have enjoyed on board endure. Sail her well. One foot, one pulse, Wex. One. Second one at 10 seconds. That's two. Sure. Third one coming at 20. That's three. Last one coming at 30 seconds, Wex, on the clock. Last one completed, zero, zero, 0030. down for launch of the Space Shuttle Endeavour on mission STS-100 is continuing on schedule today. The primary objective of shuttle mission STS-100 is to rendezvous and dock with the orbiting International Space Station for the purposes of installing the Canadian-built Space Station Remote Manipulator System. And we have at this time live TV of our commander in the suit-up room. Kent Rominger is a veteran of four previous space flights. Jeff Ashby, our pilot on this mission. This is his second space flight. Chris Hadfield, a member of the Canadian Space Agency, one of our spacewalkers on this flight, and he will serve as a mission specialist on this, his second space flight. Yuri Lonchikov, cosmonaut with the Russian Space Agency, making his very first space flight. Umberto Guidoni, representing the European Space Agency, making his second space flight today, and this is Scott Perzinski on his fourth flight. And coming around the corner, John Phillips, uh, making preparations for his very first space flight aboard Endeavour today. Start, six, five, four, three, two, one. We have the ignition and liftoff. from the International Space Station looking back at the shuttle. This is Mission Control Houston. This television view from Canada Arm 1, the shuttle's Canada Arm, looking down at uh, its next generation cousin, uh, Canada Arm 2, that's bound for the International Space Station, uh, that a longer, stronger, more flexible, and more capable robotic arm. 
endeavor uh, 300 feet below the station. This is Mission Control Houston. We're now getting uh, downlink television from uh, on board the International Space Station as this camera is pointed at the uh, porthole. Now looking along the length of the International Space Station, starting uh, on your bottom of your picture is the Destiny Laboratory, and past that is the Unity Module, the other American segment of the station, then the Zarya Control Module, one of the Russian segments, and uh, beyond it, the Zvezda Service Module section followed by the Soyuz taxi vehicle that will uh, be replaced following this flight. This is an image showing the uh, Space Lab pallet holding the Canada Arm 2, maneuvering that pallet uh, above the payload bay and into a position where it will be latched to the International Space Station. This uh, view in uh, Endeavour's airlock as uh, spacewalkers pre-breathe pure oxygen for an hour and 15 minutes before they can begin depressurizing the airlock uh, en route to exiting the outer hatch and beginning their work outside. Pilot Jeff Ashby is maneuvering Chris Hadfield up to the Space Lab pallet where the Canada Arm 2 is located. Okay, Jeff, just work our way down towards my feet, please. Coming down. Next step in the process is uh, to initially raise the still folded boom Okay, let me get up to my route. Can I get to somebody else? Okay. Once in use, the boom and the elbow joint fully extended, it uh, measures as much as uh, 58 feet in length. By the way, uh, Chris, your helmet cam view of the PGT looks like out of a training film. That's a perfect view there. <laughs> Chris, you might look up to the lab window. Susan's looking at you out the lab window, but we also see a reflection while the clouds go by. The uh, Canada Arm 2 unfolding a new era in space robotics uh, with the uh, Endeavour below as the two sail 240 miles above the Atlantic Ocean. All the objectives for today's spacewalk so far uh, accomplished. Once the crew goes to sleep, the uh, Payload Operations Center at Marshall Space Flight Center in Houston is going to be conducting uh, ground commanded testing and checkouts of that for uh, preparation for the payload transfers on the following day. station's second resident crew getting their first visitors since they began their stay on board the complex some more than a month ago. Canadian Space Agency astronaut Chris Hadfield is assisting as uh, station flight engineers Jim Voss and Susan Helms go through a checkout of the robotic workstation for the new Canadian station arm. The arm's now moving in to uh, latch on to the power and data grapple fixture on the Destiny Lab. The first true attachment of the canned arm to to the International Space Station. Astronaut uh, Scott Perzinski will use the shuttle's robotic arm to latch on to Raffaello. The second Italian space agency developed multi-purpose logistics module for the station, lifted out of the shuttle's payload bay and maneuvered up to the Unity module where the station and shuttle crews unload almost two tons of equipment and supplies from that module and then uh, reload equipment uh, that is no longer required on the station for a return to Earth. This is a tour recorded uh, by the crew earlier of the uh, station. Mid deck. Do a little acro up here through the airlock. Starting to float up through the uh, PMA. It's a really different look and feel on the station. It's huge and uh, really beautiful, really well lit. Susan and Jim have just begun work on the, uh, the big arm for today. Chris is uh, trying to figure out all the, the camera set up here. We're in the node. About to enter into the Russian segment through PMA-1. It's amazing you can just fly like Superman the whole length of it. Here's the transfer uh, compartment of the service module. Two Yuri's are talking shop here. Here's the orbital module. 
and uh, down below is the uh, reentry portion of it. On board the International Space Station, Flight Engineer Jim Voss uh, made a report to the folks in the International Station Flight Control Room that half the lights inside the Destiny Laboratory module had gone out. Spacecraft communicator Charlie Kamada letting the crew on board the space station know that it appears that the multiplexer, demultiplexer computer units in the Unity module of the space station appear to have uh, gone down again. Also asking uh, Jim Voss on board the station to uh, power down all but uh, two of the portable computer systems in the Destiny Laboratory module and to minimize their use as this continuing troubleshooting with the computers goes on at the ground level. Alpha Houston for Susan. Ed? Yes, Susan, you should be able to use that UOP now. You will have power to it, and we are also working on getting your lights back up in the lab momentarily. I thank you, and Mr. FPP, thank you. Jim Voss keeping very close coordination with the flight control team on the ground as they continue to move the space station's robotic arm, which is holding a space lab pallet, into the position where it can be grappled by the space shuttle robotic arm. Uh, we're about a minute and a half out from a handover. Showing on the left, Kennet Arm 2 connected to its power and data grapple fixture, and on the right, the shuttle robot arm. Endeavor and Alpha Houston. Houston is go for undocking. Alpha copy. Endeavor copies. Go for a duck. We are complete with our procedure through step five. Station is ready for undocking. Off in Houston, Endeavor has physical separation. Endeavor slowly drifting away from the International Space Station as pilot Jeff Ashby takes the controls. The vehicle's now about 10 feet away from each other. Endeavor Alpha Station is in attitude control. Goodbye, and we wish you a happy landing. Thank you, Alpha. We uh, hope to come back, and we're saddened to leave you all. Okay, we're looking 
continues to uh, catch up with the International Space Station at a furious pace. The truss structure currently in Atlantis's payload bay has on the outside of it the uh, first space railroad. Once it is coupled with the station's Canadian-built robotic arm, will allow the station's arm to ride up and down the length of the uh, finished truss structure. And you guys, when we dock, Jerry and I need to talk a lot, so okay. keep the chairs down so we can... <laughs> Uh, STS-110 crew of Atlantis has begun filing into the International Space Station, uh, shaking hands and uh, receiving warm greetings from the Expedition 4 crew uh, that has been on board the International Space Station alone for the last 117 days. S-0 truss segment launched aboard Atlantis as uh, astronauts uh, Ellen Ochoa and uh, flight engineer for the International Space Station Dan Bursch continue slowly lifting it out of Atlantis's payload bay. This is a live television view of the first structural attachment between the newly delivered S0 truss segment and the International Space Station's Destiny Laboratory module. About a foot and a half clearance to the strut. Yeah, can you hear those plugs? Astronaut to Lee Moran again at work uh, tightening bolts on that uh, plate that attaches uh, one leg of the tripod uh, support. of the mobile transporter as it moves from workstation number four back to workstation number five on the S0 truss structure. Is it warm enough? Tell me if it's warm enough. It's warm enough, yeah. yeah. It can warm it up more. Want it warmed up more? Ah, that's okay. It's okay? Take care, man. See you in a couple months. All right. See ya. Standing by on the pedals. Coming right off in the middle. The pedals are clear, going to LVLH. Okay. Comes the first out. Time zero three. It's not too bad now. The station's still very large.
Houston. We see you coming up on the Torva, and you are go for docking. Got to go for docking. You're looking at the P-1 truss segment. That truss segment will be grappled by the shuttle's uh, robot arm and handed off to the station's Canadon-2 robotic arm ATL tomorrow. Report. Wex, when you are ready for your Torva, you select A Auto Pry, and I'll do an item 19. TCS is good. Yeah, you need down. Here you go. Good job. This view from the television camera at the end of the Starbird 1 truss segment, the twin of that truss housed in Endeavour's cargo bay. Houston, we have a capture light and break alpha. We have capture confirmed. Expedition 6, Copy. main crew, welcome to station. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great job. Congratulations. Thank you. Very nice ducking. Beautiful. Well, thank you. 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 Good view of the 45-foot-long uh, Port 1 truss segment firmly in the grasp of the uh, shuttle's 50-foot-long Canadian-built robotic arm being maneuvered into a position for a handoff to the Canadarm 2 by Peggy Whitson from a robotic workstation in the Destiny Laboratory. Now, uh, thanks to the great Canadian hardware, we are now in position and you have a go for P1 grapple. Okay, great. Television cameras aboard Endeavour showing the structurally mated uh, truss segments. Those two truss segments now permanently mated to one another. A short time from now, Lopez Alegria and Harrington will uh, suit up for the start of today's spacewalk. There you go. How bad? That's perfect. At the top of your screen, uh, John Harrington is uh, beginning work on the handrail cart. And the handrail cart, the cedar cart, now in motion. The handbrake having been released. So I have the bolt started. I'm going to go and put the tool on it now. How do you like this vehicle? Wow, fabulous, fabulous view the shuttle. I think we're complete. We are. Good job, guys. Having uh, now stowed the port uh, keel pin the launch restraint within the framework of the truss itself, that task having been completed, they're going to move on now to a get-ahead task to relocate that handrail car that they're currently uh, transporting themselves on from the uh, Port 1 truss over to the Starboard 1 truss with Harrington affixed to the end of the station's robotic arm that you see prominently displayed here in the field of view. You see the uh, station's Canadarm 2, the station's robotic arm, and at the far end of the P-1 truss, the uh, rail car for the International Space Station. Where am I? Well, um, you're in space. I got that. I'm looking down. I don't see anything. Ah, uh, I see. You wanted to know where <laughs> over the Earth are we? Yeah. We're coming back up. Uh, we're over the South Pacific, coming back up on South America. If we look at uh, spacewalkers Mike Lopez Alegria and John Harrington uh, getting out of their extravehicular mobility unit spacesuits in the Quest airlock module. Lopez Alegria and Harrington spent six hours and ten minutes outside the International Space Station today. Inside the Unity module, Nikolai Budarin uses the uh, IP phone. It uses uh, internet type protocols uh, to work as a normal telephone for the crew members on orbit. <laughs>
this is the time to change all crew. Uh, expedition uh, five finish our uh, activity and expedition six begin uh, or start uh, the uh, mission uh, on station. From the crew of Endeavour, uh, we are honored to serve with you. Together we have continued construction of this ship on the high seas. We've helped Expedition 5 end and Expedition 6 begin. We stand in awe of this great ship built by workers on the earth who dared to dream and by explorers in space who sailed to the edge. The Expedition 5 crew now leaving after 178 days on board the International Space Station. We promise to take good care of Thank you. I think so. You will do it. Have a great flight. Okay, thanks. See you all on the ground. Same to you. Down for launch of Space Shuttle Columbia on mission STS-107 is continuing on schedule this morning. We have an international crew of seven on board, including the first Israeli astronaut. This mission will give more than 70 international scientists access to both microgravity environment of space and a set of seven researchers for the full 16 days in orbit. The commander of this flight is uh, Rick Husband, who is on his second flight. Willie McCool is our pilot on his first flight. Mike Anderson, he's the payload commander on this mission. This is his second flight. Mission specialist, Laurel Clark, on her first flight. David Brown, mission specialist, his first flight. Kopna Chavla, mission specialist, this is her second flight. And Ilan Ramon, colonel in the Israeli Air Force. Okay, Rick, if there's ever a time to use the phrase, uh, all good things come to people who wait, this is one time. And uh, for you and your crew, best of luck on this mission. Good luck and Godspeed. The Lord has blessed us with a beautiful day here. And uh, we're going to have a great mission. We appreciate all the great hard work everybody's put into this. And we're ready to go. So let's just go for orbiter access arm recheck. Columbia for the flight crew closed and launching visors and initiate O2 flow. 15 seconds. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. We have a go for main engine start. 3, 2, 1. We have booster ignition and liftoff of Space Shuttle Columbia.
to the uh, community with Willie McCool, Dave Brown, Lyle Clark, and Ilan Ramon. Meanwhile, Kapna Chavla, MS-2, is uh, busy uh, helping myself and Willie uh, get all of the uh, checklist items done before we can get ourselves set up for the home 2 prime. And here comes another beautiful day of science in space. And in a minute, we'll get into the lab and uh, see some science that we conduct there. This is KC, and she's working on an experiment known as BONES, and looks at the balance between calcium deposits, formation, and absorption, trying to understand better how to prevent osteoporosis, not only the kind of bone loss that astronauts get in space, but that everyone is at risk for on Earth, particularly women. Class is uh, working on the bioreactor experiment. We are growing prostate cancer cells, and the idea is to be able to grow bigger cells in space and thus be able to differentiate them better. Of course, one thing about microgravity is that instead of handing things, you can just pass them from one end of the module to the other. Part of the blood sample goes now to Elon, and he's working with a portable clinical blood analyzer. Mike Anderson in this view is working on the advanced respiratory system ergometer. Here comes Willie McCool, the pilot of STS-107, coming into the module. We have both in the module and in the, in the orbiter trash bags that we have to uh, empty out every day. And after he gets that trash bag out, he'll be turning into a uh, human trash compactor. Behind this door, we have the bathroom where we go for a daily hygiene. Well, it's been almost 10 days since SCS-107 launched from Kennedy Space Center, and we're uh, up here working around the clock. Here's Dave Brown at the aft station working uh, the MEDEX payload, where he's uh, doing some observations looking for dust. Here comes the Superman entry of the, uh, the astronaut from Israel. Go for the deorbit burn. Go for the burn. Thank you. Yes. And don't forget about the uh, stuff on page 3-44. Fred, yeah. so we're checking out. We've got the uh, flight controller power on. We're working through the rest of it as well. Thanks. Max and GNC, you ready? Fine, Max, we're ready. GNC's go. And we're ready, Willie. No deltas. Copy that, Delta. And Houston will get to 304 at five minutes. Are you ready for the camera, Laura? You said? Oh, Okay, no rush. Yep, plenty of time. COG in it. Copy. Roll on right. BC over my shoulder, Laura. I, I was feeling it doesn't show up really as much as the back. It's going pretty good now. Don, it's really neat. It's a bright orange yellow out over the nose, all around the, uh, the nose. Rick, we're ready for Ops 304. Here it comes. Looks good. 304. 304. And she comes to life. Look at that. Yep, we're getting some G's. Let the go of the car and it falls. This is amazing. It's really getting uh, really bright out there. Yep. Yeah, you definitely don't want to be outside now. Like we did before. Looks like a blast for us. 
FYI, I've just lost four separate temperature transducers on the left side of the vehicle. Four hide return temps? To the left outboard and left inboard elevons. I mean, you're telling me you lost them all at exactly the same time? No, right? not exactly. They were within probably four or five seconds of each other. It's all three hydraulic systems. It's two of them are to the left outboard elevon and two of them to the left inboard. GNC flight? Flight GNC. Everything look good to you? Control and rates and everything is nominal, right? Control has been stable through the uh, rolls that we've uh, done so far flight. We have good trims. I don't see anything out of the ordinary. Okay. Flight Inco. Go. Yeah, we're just taking a few hits here. We're right up on top of the tail. Not too bad. We've also lost the uh, nose gear down talk back and the right main gear down talk back. Flight ECOM. ECOM. I've got four temperature sensors on the bottom line data that are off scale low. Columbia Houston, UHF COM check. Flight ECOM, I didn't expect this bad of a hit on COM. Columbia Houston, COM check. Flight. Uh, we do not believe that uh, was the orbiter. We do not have any valid data at this time. Bad data. Columbia Houston, UHF COM check. GC flight. GC flight. Why GC? Lock the doors. Copy. Columbia Houston, UHF COM check. Marty, can you confirm that the uh, DDS, DDMS folks uh, in the Dallas area have been mobilized to the extent we're able to? Yeah, RCC, the uh, Rescue Coordination Center is mobilizing to that area and they're seeing what they can do to help us. Copy. Fido, do you have any tracking? No, sir. My C-bands uh, have not required anything. We are only acquiring false locks at this time. And folks, uh, listen up again on the flight loop. No, no phone calls off-site, outside of this room. Our discussions are on these loops, on the recorded Divas loops only. No data, no phone calls, no transmissions anywhere into or out. Flight Inco. Go. I could swap strings in the blind. Okay. Command is over. Flight, go ahead, sir. Flight, go ahead, sir. Go ahead, sir. Three, two, one. one. Houston now controlling the flight of Columbia, the international research mission finally underway. I only can see you in your mirror, but... Are you there? That, that, yeah, that I can. Yeah, I can see your camera. Okay. That plane. It's really getting uh, really bright out there. Yeah, you definitely don't want to be outside now. It's noisy in there, isn't it? Good. Okay. 